The sequences page is where you really start to program your farm bot. So we've created uh, this visual uh, programming language that allows you to program your farm bot to do whatever you want. Uh, and the way you do that is by creating these sequences. A sequence is a series of steps that FarmBot will do one after the other until the sequence is done. And that sequence of steps could be moving to a certain location, such as the location of a tool, and then picking it up and pulling it out, and then using that tool somewhere else in the garden, and then putting the tool away. So the Sequence Builder is a really powerful tool that we've built into the web application to give you complete control over your FarmBot. To create a sequence, you'll first want to press the plus button in the sequences column. You'll want to give your sequence a name and you'll want to assign it a color. That just helps you organize your sequences and be able to identify them quickly. So we'll give this blue because it relates to water. So to start building your sequence, you can drag and drop or click to add any of the commands uh, that are available on the screen. And so we have a bunch of different commands and these are the most basic things that FarmBot can do. So let's just run through each of them and discuss what they do. So the move absolute command uh, tells FarmBot to move to an absolute position in the coordinate system. You can either type in an X, Y, and Z position in millimeters and it will move there, or you can import coordinates from any point in the FarmBot system. Uh, for example, you might want to import your coordinates from your watering tool. Um, so scroll down through the list and you'll see the, the watering nozzle there. And you can see that the X, Y, and Z inputs have been auto-filled in according to the watering nozzle's location uh, as defined by the tool bay on the tools page. Uh, note that if you go to the tools page and you switch the location of the watering nozzle or you change the coordinates of the tool slot that it's in, these coordinates in the sequence will automatically update so your, your farm can continue to operate without having to rewrite any of the sequences. You can also use the X, Y, and Z offset values in case you want to move to an absolute position but offset a certain amount. So this would be useful when mounting a tool, for example. You can move to just above the tool with your first uh, move absolute. So we'll move to the watering nozzle, offset by 50 millimeters in the Z direction. Then we're gonna add another move absolute, also moving to the watering nozzle. We'll import the coordinates there. But this time we won't have a Z offset at all. So this will instruct FarmBot to move onto the watering nozzle to mount it. And then we will add one more move absolute command, which is to also the watering nozzle, but with an X offset of let's say 100. This will instruct FarmBot to pull the watering nozzle out of the tool bay. You can see that you can uh, rearrange these uh, steps in the sequence by simply dragging and dropping them. You can also duplicate each step with the copy button and you can delete the step with the trash can button. There's also helpful tool tips which describe what each step does uh, using the question mark icon. So let's see how this uh, sequence will execute. So let's send it over to the farm bot. The first thing that we need to do is press the save button. Then we're going to need to synchronize the device. So we need to press the sync button and that will instruct FarmBot to download this sequence from the web application. So we'll press the sync button, FarmBot says it's syncing, and then it will say synced when it's done and the button will turn green. You'll also see up in the status ticker that FarmBot has finished syncing. So now we're ready to test drive this sequence. So we'll go ahead and press the save and run button and uh, that will instruct FarmBot to run this sequence right now. So let's see how it works. So you can see FarmBot is now moving to just above the tool. Then it's going to move down onto the tool. And last, it's going to move out and pull the, the tool out of the tool bay. And that's the end of our sequence. A best practice that we recommend when building sequences is to make them small and concise. You don't want a monolithic sequence. You don't want a really, really long sequence because that becomes difficult to troubleshoot and difficult to change later. Instead, we recommend building very small, simple sequences and then combining them uh, to do more complex actions. So we'll show that in a little bit. 
So now let's make another sequence that puts the watering tool away. So the first thing we can do is we can actually copy our previous sequence. So we will select our previous sequence, which was pick up the watering tool from the sequences list, and we're gonna press the yellow copy button. This will create a new sequence, which we'll want to rename to put away the watering tool. Now we're basically going to want to run this sequence in reverse. So the first thing we'll want to do is we're going to want to move to just in front of the tool bay where the watering nozzle is supposed to go. So we are going to move to the watering nozzle location with an X offset of 50. Then we're going to want to move to the watering nozzle's normal home location, which is uh, has zero X, Y, or Z offset. And then we're gonna to wanna to move to just above the watering nozzle. And then uh, maybe want to move back home. So we'll just go to zero, zero, zero. And we'll save that. And now let's test drive that out. So we'll press the synchronize button. FarmBot will download this new sequence. And then we can press the save and run button and we'll watch it work. So now that we have some basic sequences built, uh, let's discuss the other commands that are available. So as I discussed before, the move absolute command will move FarmBot to an absolute position. The move relative command will move FarmBot a relative distance from its current location. So for example, we could have built our pick up the tool sequence by moving to just above the tool and then mounting the tool and then moving a relative amount to pull the tool bay to pull the tool out of the tool bay. That would have been a different way instead of using the move absolute commands. So depending on what you're trying to do with your sequences, you may want to use move absolute commands or you may want to use the move relative commands. It's up to you. The next commands in the list are the write pin and read pin commands. The write pin command allows you to turn on or off a peripheral. So the first thing you'll need to do is specify the pin number. Again, it'd be, for example, 13 for the LED on the Arduino. And then you can specify a value, either zero or one if you're controlling it digitally, zero being off, one being on, so we'll put on. And then the pin mode is specifies if it's an analog or digital uh, pin. So zero is for digital control, one would be for analog control, and you can specify a number or a value between one and, or sorry, zero and 255 for pulse width modulation, for example. The read pin command is used to read the value of a pin. So again, you can read an analog or a digital value by using the pin mode and then you'll specify which pin number you want to read from, and then you can specify what that data should be labeled. So for example, this is how you would measure the soil moisture. You would specify the label as soil moisture, and then FarmBot can record this data as a soil moisture reading. Uh, you may also want to add a light sensor onto your farm bot and you could specify the light sensor uh, and that's, you would take data that, that is light sensor data. Next we have the wait command which instructs farm bot to wait or pause for a certain amount of time in milliseconds. So for example, if you want to move to a location, turn the water on and then wait for three seconds, you would enter in 3000 into this box here and that would instruct FarmBot to wait for 3,000 milliseconds or three seconds. Next is the send message command, and that allows FarmBot to send messages either to the status ticker as a toast notification or even as an email. So you can enter in a, a message. For example, the default one is uh, specifies which position your bot is at, and you can get that as a, a ticker notification, an email, or a toast notification. You can also specify which type of uh, message this is, whether it's success, busy, warning, uh, error, or informational message, and, and FarmBot will apply the appropriate message color to uh, the status ticker or the, uh, the toast notification. You can also include in your message specific values, for example, the X, Y, or Z coordinate, or also the most recently read uh, value of a pin. And you can do that by using the curly brace syntax in, in the message itself. And you can learn more about that on our documentation hub at software.farmbot.io.
Next is the find home command. The find home command is used, just as it says, to instruct FarmBot to find home on either the X, Y, or Z axis or all three axes. So this is useful to tell FarmBot to go back and find its home position, just to make sure everything is all calibrated between its sequences. You know, it's very important that FarmBot is precise in its movements to the tool bay location and to its plant locations. And so uh, having a good home position and ensuring that FarmBot starts from home and ends at home is, is a best practice. Next is the if statement block. So this allows you to tell FarmBot to do uh, one sequence versus another based on some value. So we have an equation here, which is an if statement. So if the certain variable uh, is equal to less than or greater than um, a value, then FarmBot can go and execute one sequence else it will do something different. So as a basic example, if the X position is greater than zero, we can uh, run a sequence that is go to home. And so that would instruct FarmBot to go back to its home position if, the, if it's not at the home position on the X coordinate. Uh, else, uh, we could just say uh, none. And so if it is already at its home position, it will just stay there. Next is the execute sequence command, and this allows you to call another sequence from your current sequence. So for example, you can make a sequence of sequences. So we originally created a pick up watering tool and a put away watering tool sequence, and maybe we want to pick up our watering tool and then put it away right afterwards. Rather than making a new sequence that has all six of those steps, we can make a new sequence which does both of these things by adding an execute sequence block and we specify pick up the watering tool and then another execute sequence block with the value of put away the watering tool. And so then this will run both of those sequences back to back. You can imagine that you could make very elaborate uh, sequences of sequences of sequences of sequences and uh, you can you know, do very complicated actions built out of small, simple sequences. Next, we have the run farmware command, and this allows you to execute one of the plugins available as a farmware on the FarmBot device. Uh, so by default, uh, we have the, the plant detection farmware, which allows you to detect all of the plants and weeds in the, in the photo that was last taken. Uh, and then we also have next the take photo block, which is actually just a run farmware command uh, that runs the take photo farmware that's built into the, to the FarmBot OS as a first party farmware. Uh, and this would take a photo and then you can use it for image processing later.